Today's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Good morning, church. I hope you are doing well. Today is a Stephen's day. Yeah. So thank you, Stephen, for uh, you know um, anchoring uh, uh, today. And he actually start uh, he pitched the tone for us today this morning sermon with recollecting the lessons that he learned, also talking about how to give. Uh, today's uh, topic is the importance of charity in in the gospel mission. Um, so this preacher, scripture portion is, uh, has been read to us. It is common in some religious, uh, popular religious places in, in India, food is served to the visitors. I personally had the opportunity to visit some of these places during my um, Master of Divinity program at the same college where I'm now doing my PhD. As part of the course uh, requirement, we, re we interacted with, uh, with the religious leaders there and were even offered food to us. However, there was some concern, uh, confusion among our group how to handle the situation. Some suggested accepting the food and um, you know we can eat it, uh, we can pray before eating. While others believed it was not appropriate to receive it, some also suggested that we could receive it and choose not to eat it. What will, be, what will you do if you were in that group? I'm sure you also have an opinion. But, the, but that's not the point here. What I'm trying to make sense of it is that I always wonder why our churches cannot organize activities like this food serving to those in need, especially to the poor within the church and the outside. I am addressing this to the wider church community, the, the body of Christ. Moreover, as this sermon directed to us, to the Wellspringers, I would like to address how we can take this action together if that is something we decide to do. To address these significant inquiries, we will examine the importance of charity in the gospel mission based on the passage that has been read to us this morning. So I look at it three ways. First is, the charity was very important uh, for the early church. It's part of the church movement, in the early church. The book of Acts demonstrates how Christian church started and carried out their mission activities. According to the Acts, the believers shared, gave, and helped anyone 
who is in need by selling their possessions and holding everything in common. They did it as a crucial part of their church mission activity among them and to extend hope to the outsiders if they had also joined the fellowship. While the Acts do not explicitly state the charity led people to Christ, it is evident that charity held great importance as a mission activity in the early church. Chapter 6 shows how resolving the leadership crisis regarding the feeding of the widows allowed the apostle to thrive in their mission of preaching the gospel. This is demonstrated through the selection of process of leaders of, uh, uh, for the feeding program and the necessary qualification mentioned in verse 3. It's worth noting uh, that uh, the mention of the qualification uh, is mentioned here in the verse 3. The qualifications and uh, the mention of credential is related to being filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Do you believe serving food is required for somebody to be filled with Holy Spirit and wisdom? Serving food to the widows and the poor is something, you know, we think and we do we think seriously that uh, someone need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and the wisdom. It's worth noting that God grants both the spirit and the wisdom. James 3, 13 to 17, I would like to read. There are two kinds of wisdom mentioned there. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes with wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about what it uh, do not boast about it and deny the truth or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly unspiritual demonic for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving, considering, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Last week, we learned about Ananias and Sapphira, who were focused on worldly desires and selfish ambitions, which is unspiritual. That's what Bible says. That's what we read. In chapter, in chapter 6, we see again a similar issues with uh, some individuals involved in the food serving, uh, good food serving ministry. They showed partiality and bitterness towards specific people's backgrounds and lacked consideration and mercy. Perhaps they were not fully convinced that they work was part of the larger gospel mission that the apostles were focused on. Acts 6, 1 to 7 suggests that showing hospitality and assisting those in need is an expression of the being filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Today we have so many uh, uh, expressions and models, way people show how people, you know, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit actually demonstrates. But here in this chapter, being filled with the Spirit and wisdom is actually serving food. I'm not sure about you, but I can share a little bit about myself. I find it challenging to be hospitable and generous with my finance, clothing, and household items even if they are used and worn. In the past, I would wear my clothes until they were torn and expected, and until it was torn, and I expected Abilasha to do the same. However, I believe 
that we should make the is mic is working however however um, i believe that we should make the most of what we have been given by the lord my top pri pri priority is spreading the gospel through preaching and teaching while char charity is important it is not the main focus of my efforts abilasha and i have very different personalities she is extremely generous and always willing to give to those in need whether it be her uh, gently used clothing kitchenware or food if someone comes over while i am not there at home i tend to worry and search for any missing items when i return home honestly i did everything in my power to stop her from doing these things but i have to admit that i failed i am certain that she prayed for my change now i am not like that anymore i have changed i love now people coming over and i love to go the extra mile to help anyone who is in need of anything i am experiencing experiencing a transformation as i understand the significance of serving and spreading the gospel mission to others the holy spirit and his wisdom are assisting me in this endeavor take a moment to consider how you can contribute to god's greater purpose of serving others in any and every possible ways let us seek god's guidance and wisdom through his spirit as we pursue his mission the second part of the importance of charity in the gospel mission is it's part of god's covenant caring for widows and needy is not a concept introduced by the early church but rather a covenant established by god with the israelites from the very beginning caring for widows and orphans is a major biblical theme we have a lot of um, references throughout the bible i read few from old testament particularly from deuteronomy 10:18 he god defends cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you giving them food and clothing deuteronomy 24 17 and 19 do not deprive the foreigner or the fatherless of justice or take the cloak of the widow as a pledge when you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf do not go back to get it leave it for the foreigner the fatherless and the widow so that the lord your god may bless you in all the work of your hands isaiah 117 learn to do right seek justice defend the oppressed take up the cause of the fatherless plead the case of the widow jeremiah 7 6 and 7 if you do not oppress the foreigner the fatherless or the widow and do not shed innocent blood in this place and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm then i will let you live in this place in the land i give you i gave your ancestors for ever and ever lastly malachi 3 5 so i will come to put you on trial i will be quick to testify against sorcerers adulterers and preachers against those who defraud laborers laborers of their wages who opposes the widows and the fatherless and deprive the foreigners among you of justice but do not fear me says the almighty god these old testament commandments so how god is serious in terms of the missional life of his people this is not just given an optional um talk 
or speech god insists his people to carefully follow these commandments there is a story popular story in uh, luke 21 where jesus approves a widow's offering to be a big one than what the rich gave right it's a very popular um, parables and uh, there are a lot of sermons preached over it and i'm sure you heard a lot about it i read this verse 21 luke 21 1 to 4 so you get the context as jesus looked up he saw the rich putting their gift into the temple treasury he saw also he also saw a poor widow put in two very small coins truly i tell you he said the poor widow has put in more than all the others all these people gave their gifts out of their wealth but she out of her poverty put all she had to live in live on so you had a conventional type of sermons from this but i have a different takeaway from this uh, this passage i look at it like this widows and orphans are not obligated to give anything to the synagogue or the temple whether it be an offering or temple tax the expectation was that the temple and synagogue they belong to would take care of them and provide for their needs but sadly the jews forgot what god had told them through commandments and started to receive from the widows and orphans jesus was trying to convey to them that they had become unspiritual unloving inconsiderate selfish and merciless in their actions that is why at the end of the previous chapter that is chapter 20 jesus cast his disciples about the jewish leaders chapter 20 luke 20 45 and 45 through 47 he says while all the people were listening jesus said to his disciples beware of these teachers of the law they like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted with respect in marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogue and the place of honor at banquets they devour widows they devour widows houses and for a show make lengthy prayers these men will be punished most severely in this context jesus talking about a widow immediately after that according to jesus if we fail to provide charity to those in need and only take it from them it is equivalent to devouring them that's what jesus is making his point here i used to frequently travel to preach at many churches both in urban and rural places however i make i made a personal decision now to decline invitation from particular churches and no longer like to visit them the things that i have witnessed and heard happening in those churches have deep deeply upset me when i see when i see in those churches the poor women who are abandoned by their husbands orphan children early elderly widows and all kinds of needy people i hear from them often saying they walk over nearly 10 kilometers to attend church service because they have only 20 rupees if they take a bus or an auto they wouldn't be able to contribute to the offertory so they have to walk in state it is disheartening to hear about the incidents like this occurring in churches especially when the church seems more concerned with the fundraising than addressing the needs 
there is a, there is a more evidence of difference it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very uh, 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 open uh, openly it's evident in those churches the differences in lifestyle in the lifestyles of believers and pastors that which is dis indicating a total disparity i couldn't take it any more so sometime i had to say intentionally i am busy in order to decline preaching invita invitations from such churches in some situation in other situations maybe like our churches certain individuals needs are clear while others may not be as apparent just because some people don't show physical uh, don't show physical or financial needs doesn't mean they don't have any unmet needs it is possible that they are facing spiritual emotional and social challenges a church has a responsibility to identify the needs of its members and address them accordingly in order to promote a healthy and unified body of christ so i go to the third component of the importance of the charity in the gospel mission gospel mission first it was a part of the church movement it is a part of god's covenant third it's a part of the broader mission a gospel mission it's a part of the broader gospel mission the attention and dedication that the early church displayed when addressing the matter of providing food for widows in acts 6 highlights the importance of their work as part of their broader mission work for the lord verse 2 says first of all the 12 apostles and all disciples the entire congregation gathered on this issue seriously the 12 apostles the very very busy men the responsibility man who can do more things better things into something what we we may consider noble thing but bible says all 12 disciples including every members of the church gathered on this issue why did they take it as so important that everyone in the church come together was three says all together agree to select seven men who are filled with the spirit and wisdom i asked this question while ago why do they need such highly qualified ones to take care of the feeding ministry why do they need such highly qualifications for someone to take care of feeding programs in the church was six sos says the seven men no the seven men you can read it in chapter 5 uh, sorry verse 5 they were consecrated for this ministry they were literally ordained for this ministry again why do they need to do this nowadays we have only seen people being uh, uh, people those who are involved in preaching ministry pastoral ministry being ordained right so see, do they really need to be ordained to feed the widows and poor and voiceless the marginalized downtrodden immediately was after that was seven says the gospel was spread everywhere and so many people including priest believed in jesus and become a disciples immediately when they cleared the thing and they set right the mission and the mission was flourishing the mission was going easy and they were able to achieve as part of the broader mission 
since the ministry of charity is taken care of by the right people who are with the spirit and wisdom it enabled other ministries in the church to function properly it is significant to note that stephen's ability to preach and perform miracles miraculous wonders and signs through the grace and power of god validates the qualifications and capabilities of these seven chosen individuals to carry out various forms of ministry various forms of gospel's ministry they can not only do this they were not only called to only feed the widow they were very much qualified and capable to do anything in the broader mission of god i have witnessed many individuals in various settings who aspire to take on responsibilities that are noble meaningful and do not involve dealing with the difficulty difficult and messy or messy situations such as helping the less fortunate when someone on on a team has exceptional qualification and capabilities it can be difficult for the organizer to assign them a suitable role without causing any offense it become a difficult right if you are a team leader if you are given to handle people who are highly educated highly qualified during the last christmas we collaborated with uh, uh, our jiva jala fellowship the kannada church and we celebrated the christmas we are uh, during that uh, 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 celebration we from the uh, canada church we actually forgot to give them the instruction on how to separate food waste so it seems like the people put everything in one bag and some of them left their plates with the food and food waste on them just you know because they were unaware of how we function when everyone had left i noticed that eric and sunita were cleaning plates and separating the wastes i recall how both of them were eager to serve on that day that particular day they are both respected professionals but their demonstration of service in church and ministry is truly exceptional and sets an admirable example for ful fulfilling god's mission we have both examples charit cha cha charitable act should not be done should be uh, sorry charitable act should be done willing willingly and not forced upon individuals by compulsions we have both examples from the acts book of acts Ananias and Sapphira in chapter 5 and the Hebrew Jews in chapter 6 who did it through compulsion and were taken away and that the, the mission was taken away from them the apostles the believers and the seven elects on the other hand are the ones who did it through through voluntary submission and their contribution added significance to the broader gospel mission so we have come to the end in conclusion i would like to suggest some proposals that can help us continue the broader gospel mission mission of the early church it is the mandate it is the part of the mission it's we, we all should involve in this ministry because preaching teaching uh, coming together fun and all this is fine but if we miss something which is part of the very, very crucial part of the early church and if we are missing that 
and we are failing to recognize that need in our church and outside and the community in the society then something that we are missing because early church they were they took it very seriously even paul says i was reminded to consider the poor one the, 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 the same tradition was passed on to apostle paul from the 12 apostles and he says when he was appointed consecrated and he was sent to 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 minister among the gentiles this mission he was he was reminded of he says i was insisted reminded to continuously consider the poor and the widows and the orphans so it's a it's a very important ministry so therefore i would give a few insights into it how as a church we could do this we could identify firstly we could identify who among us received the ministry of charity it's a very challenging work as apostles did we have to take it very seriously and identify who among us um, is gifted or called to do this ministry their focus can be on how to effectively connect with the individuals who have diverse needs it may not be with the, the physical financial needs or any needs which is which involves time finance resource talents to minister and build lives we need to find those men and women who can serve in god's larger purpose the larger mission of god and the other members of the church can make regular contributions to support this ministry how can we regularly support this ministry you can do it through finance you can donate your world but still usable cloth to those in needs we do it abilash and i we do it every year couple of time we collect clothes from different people and we send to different people across karnataka and we we, we carry some time go and give to the people and it means a lot and sometimes people call me and ask is there uh, cloth and it's very very important what you may think very little of it may be a great helpful for someone some or you know if you think that you are able to buy a new one it's better to give away the old one which still can be used for someone else and we can do this all of us can do this and we can give away any household things that are not used and simply lying in your house not simply keeping in the store rooms if you are going to use it fine but you have no plans of using it and you don't have plan you are trying to make a plan i think that you need to better dispose it give to people who can better use it try to spend time with the people who are feeling lonely and uh, some kind of person needs and you can do that to your fellow sisters and fellow brothers and you can find catch catch up with them and minister to them because this can be a great charity that you would invest on somebody's life utilize your talents to build others some of us maybe we are educated and we can teach some subjects to the people who are struggling children who are struggling are you are um, gifted with uh, so the the music instruments and you can import it definitely it makes it makes a lot of differences in life and people i know those who went to um um football training there are there are you know sports ministry right there are those who went to football training in the morning small boys 
and become a great, um, a follower of Christ a strong follower of Christ and those who went to a free tuition and some of them are today pastors and they are serving in the God's mission and if you can take some time to lavish uh, to uh, to uh, leverage your gifts and talents i would i would tell you that that would be a great investment in the lord's kingdom that is the mission the lord and the broader mission that we are called to do it everything everything means everything that even uh, stephen bros reminded us the early church right from the apostles and to the all believers they shared everything in common everything in common i don't know how this this will apply to us and to me to you individually personally but i want you to take it seriously and think what do you have would you like to share would you consider it is common for everybody especially those who are part of the body of christ let's pray and close this i would like to uh, close this and we'll all, uh, close our eyes and we can ask the lord the spirit of god to help us to 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 go about it um, what the lord will convince us this morning loving father thank you for you showing us the greatest love upon us through sending your only son to this world that's the greatest investment that is the greatest charity that's the greatest lord blessings that we received from you lord and today lord you asked us to love everybody and we wanted to love with what we have please lord it may be a struggle it may be a difficult uh, lord i pray that lord you may strengthen us and you may lord be with us may your spirit and wisdom will be granted to us to act according to what you have been you have called us to um, lord in this world lord i commit each and every one of us here and thank you for speaking to us in jesus name i pray amen